I am the author of www.getyourchildintoget.com and in this video we're going to try to get past question number 21 in the book Shape Size Color Count. I've got my three little buddies here who are going to help me do it. First a little bit of background. So uh, the premise of the book, this is a book to prepare for test prep. I call this book pre-test prep and it should be obvious when we get into question 21. Um, this book is designed for as soon as your child is ready, which can be anywhere from age four uh, to maybe four years, three months, to four years, six months. Depends on the child. If your child is ready to blow these questions away at his fourth birthday, uh, don't buy the book. You are the competition. Um, these exercises are designed to unleash a host of cognitive skills um, that never cease to amaze me and to create a test-taking machine or at least prepare the child for um, a period of test prep. With younger children, there's some challenges that need to be overcome. First of all, we're dealing with a child with a blank slate as far as cognitive skills are concerned, which is good. Um, if your child is too young, you might have to deal with um, basic executive skills like being able to sit still and concentrate. That's part of the deal. Uh, if your child is too young, in terms of just being able to understand what we're talking about, like mine was, I encourage you to try every four weeks or so until your child is ready. Um, there's a lot of new language that's gonna be, uh, play a key role in doing these questions and we're gonna talk about that. And due to the uh, limited cognitive skills that we usually start with, this is gonna be an area of a steep learning curve. Okay, so let's jump into question 21. Here it is. Um, now, when you're ready for full-blown test prep, you're going to get a, questions like this with uh, um, quantitative or figure matrices. These questions are from Smart Cookies COGAT Form 7 Double Test Book, which is one of my favorites. Problem is, um, I brought this book out, uh, sat down with my child, and he made absolutely zero progress with the matrix and couldn't figure out any of it. So in shape, size, color count, which is pre-test prep, um, we start with the top part of the matrix and then hammer away nicely at the permutations until the child is ready to move on to a more advanced test prep book. Um, in this question, we've got two fish in the left box and three fish in the right box. What changed? Um, I worked with an adorable little four-year-old this morning who had been struggling with this for a couple of weeks. So we're going to take a step back and backtrack. Um, and this is where the language comes into play. So here's a party. We've got two animals. Okay, this is the before. And at the party, they are joined by a pig. So how many do we have before? The answer is two. And how many do we have after the pig joins? It's three. So what changed? A pig came. Okay, can we quantify it? No, I don't use the term quantify. Okay, so how many showed up? We had two, we now have three. One showed up. Interestingly, um, I never have a problem with plus one or plus two. I don't even have a problem with minus one or minus two. I was really hoping that this would pave the way for negative numbers at age six or seven, which we in fact did. Uh, but this, I have no evidence that this had any bearing on that. Um, so maybe that's not working. And then tomorrow, we'll do two cups. So this is the before. And now I've got three cups. This is the after. So how did that change? We had two. We get one more. Now we have three. So the answer is plus one. Or if we have three, and now we have two, it's minus one. This could take two or three weeks. Um, when I do a problem like this, anytime we take a cognitive leap in any of this material, um, I'm, I'm counting on about 25 minutes of work. Problem with four-year-olds is they have about 15 good minutes of thinking, so it might be a multi-day effort. Now, I'm, the um, problems double up in this section, and um, on the same page, we have the next problem. Once again, we're at a party with some fish. So we have a crab, a blowfish, a clownfish, and my personal favorite, which is a blobfish. How many do we have? We have four. Okay, I'm gonna to try to say 
this in as many different ways as I can. So until until it starts to th sink in. All right, now here's the after in the right box. Um, what changed? Well, what changed is the crab's missing. Okay, so is it minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, or plus three? Um, and the answer is, of course, minus one. Again, once the kid gets it, using the term minus one or pointing to minus one or circling it is no problem. So when I teach kids math up until about uh, middle school or counting, I like to think of it as whole language math. How many different ways can you say it? We're stretching out the problem so that it has time to sink in. Um, and you never know, you say it three different ways, maybe one clicks. Uh, but of course, I'll expect the kids to know all. Now, we never got negative, uh, we didn't get a head start on negative numbers a couple years later. It was starting from scratch. But what I did find as we plowed away um, on problems of this type, and kids generally accelerate on their own until you're just zipping through near the end of the um, book, hopefully. Um, what, uh, what I found is that after a while, kids will look at this picture and stop counting and see four. Okay, and the book is, is sort of designed to encourage that. And then this is three, and what I really like to get to, and it might take a couple of test prep books with more advanced figure matrices, but I'd like to see, uh, or I'd like to observe the child, C4, C3, and see a difference of one in one shot. That would be ideal. Um, and, and of course, that type of skill um, goes right into first and second grade math. Okay, now question 56 is going to be similar. You're going to feel like you're back to um, 25 minutes again. In the book, there are three pages that sort of set up the concept of doubling, tripling, um, halving, um, and cut in thirds. So uh, you can spend some time on that. And in this case, we've got eight. Now we have four, right? So what happened? It was, uh, we lost four, so that's minus four, but that's not enough. And I got this right out of the cognitive skills tests. Um, it was also cut in half. Okay, so now we've doubled the work. When you see a question like this, if you see anything odd in the picture, spend some time, ask about it. Okay, what's what exactly is happening? And I go into more detail in the solutions. In fact, um, in the first edition, the printing cost for color is so high and it's on a page count, and I didn't think uh, I needed to put solutions in. Um, you know, this is obviously minus four to an adult, and the child is unlikely to be working alone. But the more I work with children, the more I realize that I spend a lot more time on problems like this than parent, most parents. So if you go to how to prepare for the gifted and talented test, which is www.getyourchildinagat.com, and you search through the um, permanent pages on the right, you will find Chapter 4A, Shape, Size, Color, Count, Solutions. And um, I'm editing these as I go, but uh, I am describing in here what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how I coach children, and what things I, want, I would want the parent to do beyond the question. Um, I am down to 48. I'm not sure I need to work through all, I don't know, a couple hundred questions in the book, but um, I may. And if you have any questions at all or if you're struggling with your child, feel free to post a comment on www.getyourchildinagat.com and I'll respond as soon as I can. Good luck with pre-test prep and good luck with test prep after that. Thank you.